energy stand part of the schedule. Moana Mackey. Thank you, Mr Chair. Mr Chair, New Zealanders are paying too much for their power bills. And the next Labor-led government will do something about this very serious issue that the current national government is refusing to acknowledge even exists. And what we've seen since the global financial crisis hit is that in every other uh, developed country, power prices have dropped as demand has flattened, as protections for consumers have kicked in. And New Zealand is one of the few countries in the developed world where power prices have continued to increase at twice the rate of inflation uh, despite flattening demand, a surplus of generation and a collapsed carbon price. Mr Chair, in one year we've seen a 10,000 increase in disconnections. In one year, that's 10,000 households that no longer have power because they cannot afford to pay the power bills. We have flattening demand in this country. We have an oversupply of generation. If power prices aren't going down now, then they are never going to go down. It shows what the Labour Party has been saying, which is the Bradford reforms have failed. We do not have the kind of competition in our retail market that would ensure that retail margins and prices are driven down in times of low demand, and a Labour-led government will do something about it. Because we have the Minister of Energy who says New Zealanders aren't paying too much for their power prices, but he doesn't know what too much would be. So I think that's a zero credibility fail for the Minister of Energy. You can't say that New Zealanders aren't paying too much if you don't know what too much is. But the Minister of Energy doesn't know. I suspect too much will be when the Minister of Energy can't afford to pay his power bills on his ministerial salaries. Then power prices will be too high. But until then, the rest of New Zealanders can suffer with power prices continuing to increase at twice the rate of inflation and the government refusing to do anything about it. We have the second biggest gap in the OECD between residential and industrial tariffs. So when the minister stands up and says, you know, the market is working really well, what he's saying is it's working well for the big end of town, and that's being offset by residential consumers who are paying far more for their electricity uh, than they should be, given the fact, Mr Chair, that New Zealand is blessed with an abundance of cheap renewable energy. More than 60% of our electricity comes from hydro generation, from assets that were built by the taxpayers of New Zealand that have been paid for time and time again from a free public resource, water, we should have some of the cheapest energy in the world, and yet we don't because of the way we price electricity in this country. And I would like to see the National Party, next session party speaker, Mr Jonathan Young, actually explain why, why hydro producers should be being paid the marginal price set by gas when they haven't done anything, when they haven't done anything to deserve that windfall in profit from assets that were built by generations of New Zealanders uh, and, and taxpayers. So a Labor government will change the way we price electricity because we do not have competition in our retail market. And I recently went to the launch of a new retailer in Dunedin called Payless Energy and we had, you know, kind of the National Party rhetoric was, here's another retailer, that means we must have competition. Well, the reality is there are 10 retailers now in Dunedin and yet the market is still overwhelmingly dominated by the four big gin tailors. They're happy to let those small companies pop up and have a handful of ICPs, but the minute they come to scale, that's when they will no longer be tolerated, because just because you have a number of different companies doesn't mean you have competition in pricing, Mr Young. Doesn't mean you have competition in pricing. So the first thing the national government does is they try and blame transmission charges and lines companies for the increase in power prices since the Bradford reforms. Let's be clear about the cost of the trans power upgrade. Yes, it had to go ahead. Yes, it's billions of dollars. Uh, yes, both Labor and National have agreed that that, that that upgrade should go ahead. Here's the difference. A Labor government said to TransPower, you do not have to pay us a dividend so that you can pay for that transmission upgrade out of what you would have been paying to government, and then there will be no pass-on cost to the consumer through the retailers, because that's how you can pay for it. When the National Party came in, not only did they say to TransPower, we want that dividend back right now, by the way, but can you backdate it? Can you backdate it? And now we have a government who claims to care about the, the rising cost of electricity on businesses and households, saying to TransPower, actually, no, you need to charge consumers for what government was paying for when Labor uh, started that transmission upgrade work. So, Mr Young, why is your government requiring TransPower to now supply a dividend 
to backdate uh, the payment of that dividend when all that is going to do is impact on those transmission charges which will now be passed on to consumers through the retailers. I've been going around visiting lines companies and they've been very frustrated in the case of one lines company, Mr Chair, Mr Chair, Mr Chair. Moana Mackey. Thank you. In the case of one lines company where uh, they were uh, they're publicly owned as most lines companies are, they wanted to pay a dividend back to their consumers. They wanted to pay a dividend back to their consumers. So they had to pass that through the, the retailers, because that's the way that they charge, none of that dividend was passed through to the end consumers. So here we have a lines company, which the National Party like to blame uh, for putting up the increases on households. A lines company actually saying, Jonathan Young says, true, lines companies are doing that. Here you have a lines company that is actually trying to give some money back, and the retailer refused to pass it on. They pocketed it, Mr Young. How is that a system that is good? for consumers. Let's have a look at what's happened up in Auckland, because I think what Mr Young doesn't understand is that actually lines companies are incredibly tightly regulated, thanks to the last Labor government, which regulated lines companies, very tightly regulated as to what they can charge their consumers. So they have a pricing path that is set by the Commerce Commission. They have to provide a certain uh, return. They're not able to go out there and just charge whatever they want, like the retailers can with the retail margin. Um, they have to provide a return which is based on their, uh, which is based on, on their actual costs and, the, and then a fair return as well. So that's what, that's what they charge. Uh, and the Commerce Commission did a reset last year, which came into force in April this year, where they actually said, Vector, one of our, which is our biggest lines company based in Auckland, you need to drop your prices. So Vector did that, and only two of the 11 retailers in Auckland have passed that cost savings on to consumers. Only two. So the lines companies, which are uh, constantly being blamed by the National Party, who actually have no control over what they charge because they're so tightly regulated, who charge based on their actual costs, who have tried to give money back to consumers uh, but have not had that money passed through, in some cases, by the retailers, are apparently the ones causing all the problems, according to the National Party. Well, it's not true. None of the research backs it up. Uh, the increase in prices since the Bradford reforms has been the wholesale electricity market, the retail margin, it hasn't been in transmission charges, it hasn't been in lines charges. Uh, it's utterly dishonest for the National Party to claim that that's the case uh, when it's not. So what the National Party likes to point to um, is the What's My Number campaign, and the fact that that's been so successful shows that we have competition. Well, actually, there's no research that's been done as to why people change power companies. The UK have a similar campaign. They've actually researched why people change power companies. A third of the people who changed changed to a tariff that was cheaper. A third of the people who changed changed to a tariff that was exactly the same. And a third of the people who changed changed to a tariff that was more expensive. And what that shows is that there are a range of reasons why people change electricity retailer, and price is only one of them. And one of the questions we've been asking government is how many of those people who've gone on the What's My Number website were people who shifted house. It's people who just moved. They weren't looking for competition. They were just simply shifted and wanted to find out who was out there. Well, the government's not collecting those kind of statistics either. And the reality is that when you look at that gap in price that's offered on the What's My Number campaign, often the difference is uh, early payment discounts. That's the difference in the power prices that are being offered. Well, if you can't afford to pay the power bill in the first place, then an early payment discount is completely hopeless. And the reality is for the poorest families, they're lucky if they can find one power company to pick them up. This kind of fantasy idea that the National Party have in this la-la land that they live in, that people out there, the poorest families, actually have a choice of retailer when they're lucky if they can find one to pick them up and keep them on shows just how out of touch they are. So, you know, we spent nine years in government trying to make the system work, and it doesn't. The system is broken. Minister Bridges says the Bradford reforms just need time to bed in. They do not. They have utterly and completely failed. 15 years, 15 years, it's time to actually do something about the fact that despite having some of the cheapest electricity being generated, and I wish we could hook Mr Hanadi up to the national grid, all our power problems would be solved if we could hook his mouth up to, uh, hook his mouth up to the national grid, that's one big energy source over there. The reality is tinkering isn't going to make a difference. If we want genuine, genuine competition in the retail market, and that's what we want, we need to change the way we price electricity, that's what the NZ Power Policy does. We're not regulating the retail market or the generation market. We're simply providing and ensuring that retailers who want to come into the market are able to compete with the four big gen tailors who up until now have been able to squash any real competition that comes into play. New Zealanders know they're paying 
too much for power prices. The model that we have selected is one which is commonly used overseas. It is, it's not something that New Zealanders need to be scary about. What they need to be scared about is what's in that next power bill when it, hits in their, when it lands in their letterbox and when they have to open it wondering whether they're going to be able to keep the lights on for the next month. That's what New Zealanders are scared of. And a Labour-led government is the only way that we're going to get fair pricing and electricity. Jonathan Young. Thank you, Mr Chair. Look, I'm very pleased to speak after the last speaker and just answer some of the questions that she has put.